Hi everyone and welcome to this Google Digital Garage training session all about finding new career opportunities online. How can we start to find a job online? How can we start to really start seeking out those career opportunities that are available to us? Um, this session is short and sweet. We are going to break it down into two really clear sec sections. To introduce myself, my name's Kirsty, and I'm a trainer for Google's free skills training program, Google Digital Garage. I've been working in this field now for around six or seven years, and I'm very, very excited to be with you today. My absolute passion is helping people find their space online and start to find where they can sell themselves, where they can really start selling their skills, their strengths, or discover, discovering those skills or strengths in order to effectively sell yourself in a digital space. But I'm not up here alone. You might have already said hello to our wonderful moderator, Alison, who is in the chat today. If you haven't said hello, please do pop over into that chat, say hello, introduce yourself, let us know where you're signing in from today and, and what are you looking for? Are you looking, actively looking for new opportunities at the moment or have you uh, started in a new sector? Let me know and let Alison know in that chat where you're up to and how you have got going with your career opportunity job search. Like I said, we're only here for 15 minutes, so it is a very short and sweet session today. And I will pause for questions right at the end. But if you do have any questions as we move through this presentation, don't be afraid to ask Alison any of those questions as we continu continue through the session. Now, how are we going to break this session up? First of all, we want to start thinking about understanding the online career market. What does that mean? And then we're going to actually explore some tips for you to find work, find jobs within that online career market. And I can see a couple of hellos coming through there in the chat. So we've got Luca. Hello. I'm a freelance web designer. We've got Mazood, a digital, digital marketer from Bangladesh. We've got Laura, a virtual personal assistant from Kenya. Um, nice. And those um, virtual PAs have, have really spiked in popularity, haven't they? So it's really nice to meet you all. Thank you so much for saying hello. Okay, so step one, understanding the online career market. How can we start to explore the online career market and what that means? Think about the different types that you can generally find. Permanent, contracted jobs or freelance jobs and there's a couple of you here that have said I'm, I'm a freelance web designer for example most of us are familiar with that first option permanent work and perhaps this takes takes shape in that traditional sense of nine to five we go to a, a place of work and usually these types of jobs continue until you or the, the party you work for to chooses to end that contract Contract work in the middle, however, is what we call a fixed term employment. So you could take a fixed term contract for around six months, a year, three months, and it's for a set period of time. Now, a fixed term contract can be extended or later down the line turned into a permanent contract as well. Then we have freelance. Now, freelance work is usually project based. And it doesn't involve you becoming an internal employee of that company. Sometimes you can pick up referring clients and this type of work is very much self-driven. So you're not hitting that same employed criteria as some of the other options. So we've got the three categories of the type of work that we can start to find online. But where do we find them? Once we know what kind of job we're looking for, do we want something permanent, contracted or freelance? We can start to search online for the types of jobs. And there's loads of different places that we can start to understand. And there's three key areas for you to use in order to find some job opportunities. Now, the first would be looking directly at company websites. When you find work on the, the relevant companies that you're really excited and would love to have an opportunity to work for, you can apply directly to that company without any third party sites. Now, 92% of recruiters say that this was their best way to find new talent. 
And if you know that that job and that company that you want to work for, and you know exactly who they are and exactly what the job role is, then absolutely, this could be a great way to go directly to that company site and apply directly for that work. However, if you're unsure of the exact organization you want to work for, or you want to cast a bit of a wider net, there's a couple of other options. First one, social media. Social media can be a huge help. There's a few different job boards, but one of the most popular, LinkedIn. LinkedIn is the leading professional networking site. 87% of recruiters are regularly using LinkedIn to source new talent. With LinkedIn as someone looking for work, you can really easily start to apply for some of those jobs. You can preload your CV. You could use your profile as long as that profile is as up to date as possible. And you can also start to network, reach out to individuals, reach reach out to individuals that work for the specific company um, who might know about potential job openings, maybe heads of departments or managerial positions within a company you'd like to work with. So social media can really help you. Now, there's other there's other job boards on places like Facebook. So if Facebook is something that you use as a social media platform, have a look at the jobs board there as well. Then we have what we call job marketplaces, which is another place you might want to start to have a look for potential job opportunities and career opportunities. Now, these sites are dedicated to matching recruiters with talent. And we can use all sorts of filter criteria, types of jobs, salary, location, and start to break down what we're looking for as a job seeker. But let's have a look a little bit into a little bit more about these job marketplaces and some of the ones that are available. Indeed, indeed.com. You might have heard of these before. Absolutely. It's a leading global job marketplace where you can start to build your CV as an Indeed profile and really easily apply for jobs that are out there within your industry. A really great feature is the fact that you can actually view company reviews and you can also find salaries for your specific in industry and see whether that job description matches up to your expected salary. Then there's also a great site called freelancer.com. Now this is more of a hub and it's as it says on the tin there, for freelancers to help you find clients. So some other popular ones that you might have heard of before that work very similar to freelancer are Fiverr, Upwork, and there's a few freelancer opportunities on things like CV Library, um, and also People Per Hour can be a really nice one to use as well. So all of these types of platforms allow you to upload a portfolio approach and examples of your work and start to network in order to find clients as a freelancer. Then we have other types of marketplaces like Read, very similar to, to Indeed. It is a marketplace for jobs. You can start to filter and search for jobs in your specific field or industry. And you can also work with a consultant via Read to actually improve your CV and make sure that your job applications and your, your skills and the, the way that you talk to potential employers is, is right where it needs to be. So that's a really nice feature with Read. So my suggestion would be to start having a look at, OK, what type of job am I looking for? Am I looking for a permanent role, a freelance role, a contracted role? And that's going to allow you to understand exactly what platform is out there for you to start having a look for some of those career opportunities. Second part of this session. Now I want to go over a couple of tips to start thinking about how you can find a job online. How can you actually do that? We know where to look now. We have understood what type of job we're looking for, potentially what type of organisation we're thinking about. Loads of what we do and, and absolutely loads of what we do online is now automated within that application process. And a lot of the, the jobs boards that we've just mentioned, as well as company sites, will actually use what we call applicant tracking software to filter your CV and your application by relevance. 98% of large organizations are using this software to actually filter their candidates. So what this means is that your application or your CV will at first go through a program that is going to decide whether you have the necessary skills, experience, 
qualifications when you send in that application before it gets in front of human eyes. So what we need to do is we need to make sure that we've adapted our CV, our application, so that it doesn't get filtered out. And there's a couple of things that you can do or, or a couple of tips around this. First of all, read that job description really carefully. Pick out key phrases, key words that they've used. And if they use the word diligent, don't use the word hardworking. Make sure you're matching the language in that job description. Second tip I can give you is try to use the job title in your CV a few different times. So if you're applying to be a video editor, use that phrase to describe previous work if it's relevant within that, that those job descriptions. And finally, the third tip I'd give you on this is always be as accurate as possible. Don't try and keyword stuff or use words or phrases that just are a lie, they're not true, because we don't wanna mislead recruiters or misrepresent exactly what you've had as an experience. Loads of recruiters are going to check social media sites, job sites, as we've mentioned before, to start finding candidates. And some, some of them, and what they'll do is run searches, view your profile, and keep one top tip on these profiles is keeping up to date, giving yourself the absolute best chance of standing out to those recruiters looking at your profiles and appearing, actually getting to those search results. It's all about keeping your profile up to date. And make sure you're consistently up to update your profile with anything like your achievements or your awards that you've that you've updated or won. Have you got any metrics of success? Statements like I increased customer retention by 20% in 2021. And finally, do you have any new experiences or skills that are most relevant to what you are applying to do? It's not necessary to include absolutely everything. You know, if it's too long, you might actually detract employers or potential employers from reading it. But is there anything that's specific? It's the most relevant experience or projects to the job that you're trying to apply for. Now, as you start creating your profiles on these different job sites, you also might want to keep track of them. So creating yourself something like a document, a tracking document or a spreadsheet so you know which profiles you've updated and when. And you can make sure if you're going to use a certain profile in order to, to look for the next project or the next client or the next work, the next contract, you know that that profile is as up to date as it needs to be. When it comes to creating your CV, don't use the same application or CV for every single job that you apply for, even if it's a similar role. Make, make sure you go back to those tips that I mentioned earlier every job description, read it carefully, look at those main points, show how you can add value to that specific position or start to demonstrate exactly where you've succeeded in the tasks that they're talking about in that job description. If you have access to some of the recruiters and, and you can always write them a cover letter, which is that next step, and this can really help create a bit more of a personal connection with the person you're applying for. And it's 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 huge to be able to actually make that that connection in a personal way rather than a generic to whom it may concern or dear recruitment team. And finally, do your research on that company. Make sure you understand their values, their mission, and you talk about how you can continue to work within that ethos. I told you it was going to be quick. So over to you. Following this session today, start considering exactly how you could change your approach to how you're searching for work online. Is there any changes that you're going to make for your CV? Which site will you create a profile on? What's going to be most useful for you? Now, I can see we've got a couple of questions. We've got one minute left. So um, what have we got here? How to create a fresher digital marketing resume. Um, now, we do have a great session that's a full hour session all about creating a CV. And I think that would be the best session for you to go to because it's really hard for me to answer that question in one minute. Um, but yeah, I would recommend going to the schedule, the upcoming schedule and finding our session called Create a CV and cover letter, I think it's called, um, and, and sign up to that. It's a full one hour session where you will walk through those key areas of what you need to include on that resume. Uh, Jaffa, can I find a job online without with only having fundamentals in digital marketing certificate? Now, 
yes, I think it's a really great start and there will be some entry level opportunities when it comes to using that certificate as a bit of experience, Jaffa. But I would also recommend that you go over to another Google training site called Skillshop, and I'm sure Alison can dig out the link, and have a look if there's any areas that you want to specialise in when it comes to that digital marketing. The difference between the fundamental certificate and the um, certificates on Skillshop, the Skillshop ones expire. So you have to keep up to date year on year with that knowledge, which really shows a commitment to a specific field. So that brings me to the end. I'm going to wrap up now. We are out of time. That went fast, didn't it? Um, I do want to really highlight our one-to-one -one mentoring, though, uh, which I know isn't on screen, but I'm sure Alison can pop the link in the chat for you. We are offering free one-to-one -one mentoring for businesses, UK charities, individuals, anyone looking to go that next step with their career. So please do take the link that Alison's going to pop in the chat for you, and hopefully we will see you on some of those one-to-one -one mentoring sessions very soon. Other than that, I'm going to wrap up here we are out of time like I said so I hope you found this session as useful as you possibly can and I look forward to seeing you on many more Google Digital Garage training sessions in the future goodbye <laughs>